Today, Sony announced a brand new camera designed specifically with the content creator in mind, introducing the Sony ZV-1. Now, I must admit that when I found out it was a compact one inch sensor camera that they were releasing, I figured it probably wouldn't be for me. But this camera has turned out to be the camera that I didn't know I wanted. And no, this isn't a sponsored video. I don't get to keep the camera. Nobody paid me to say any of this. I'm just actually really stoked about this thing. The size is similar to that of their RX100 line and it carries the same sensor, but there are a handful of changes that have been made. And even if this camera isn't quite for you, you might want to watch anyway, as we might see some of the new features in this camera trickle into future Sony cameras in other lines too. The ZV-1 has a 24 to 70 millimeter full frame equivalent lens that varies an aperture from f1.8 to f2.8 from the wide to the telephoto. They've improved the grip, they've given us a fully articulating side flip screen that so many people have been asking for, and to top it all off, it's only $799 US or $999 Canadian, which is $300 cheaper US or $600 cheaper Canadian than the RX100 Mark 7. There's also an introductory price of $749 US for the first month. Links are all in the description if you want to check those out. Now, they didn't just throw together a new one inch sensor camera, they also packed it full of brand new features and made it super easy for anyone to use. So let's take a look at some of the exciting features on this new camera. First off, we have the amazing Sony autofocus system that just keeps getting better and better. It includes real time face detection, eye detection, and subject tracking in both video and photo modes. I decided to put this camera to the test by shooting my entire review of the Insta360 ONE R with it, and I never Never ran into any problems with hunting, missing focus, or not finding my face or eye while I was talking to the camera. And speaking of good focus, there's a new product showcase setting that's designed specifically to find objects that you could be holding up for your audience to see. For example, in my video for the Insta360 ONE R, I was holding up a bunch of different small pieces of gear in front of myself to show the camera. Normally, to get objects like that in focus, I would have to make sure that my entire face was covered in order to force the camera to choose the object rather than me. And even then, it might be slow to figure out what to focus on, like this. But with the product showcase setting turn on, it knew to choose the object in the foreground even if my face was still visible, and it focused on it smoothly and quickly. This was something that I was a bit skeptical about it actually working, but it worked so well. This might not be useful for everyone, but I can't count the amount of times that I've watched videos where people, including myself, held products up to show, and they had to wait for the object to be in focus. I'm talking about tech, sneakers, makeup, you name it, this is gonna be handy for so many people and I hope that we see it in other cameras from Sony in the future too. They've also added a function called background defocus that with the click of a button will adjust the camera settings to give you a shallow depth of field without changing the exposure. And part of the reason that they're able to do this is because the ZV-1 includes a built-in three-stop ND filter, something that they're not making a big deal about in their literature, but I personally think is super exciting. I will admit that as a primarily manual settings shooter, I didn't use the background defocus button during the video that I shot with this camera, but I can see how this would be handy for someone who shoots in more automatic modes or if they don't know the settings well and they still wanna get that nice shallow depth of field. And speaking of automatic modes, Sony has also included a new auto exposure setting that prioritizes faces as well. So if it detects a face in the scene, it will make sure that that is exposed correctly rather than trying to guess exposure based on the entire scene. This camera can shoot 4K video and uses all the picture profiles that you can get on other Sony cameras, including S-Log2, S-Log3, and HLG. There is now a selectable skin softening effect that personally, I don't think looks great, but I see a lot of people using similar functions on social media apps, so I assume that certain people will like it. The nice thing is that you can choose from off, low, medium, and high amounts of skin softening so you can dial it in to taste. The downside to this effect is that if the camera stops detecting a face, it turns on and off the softening effect, even if you're still in the frame, which can look a little bit odd. Now, when you first get this camera, you might notice that there's a five minute record limit in 4K, except you can just turn it off. Straight out of the box, this camera comes with a setting called Auto Power Off Temperature set to standard. This is there to keep the camera from overheating and also it happens to be the thing that 
turns on the five minute limit. But if you change that setting to high instead of standard, you now have no recording limit. And on the last handful of Sony cameras that have had this same auto power off temperature setting, I have never run into any problems with leaving it on high and running the camera for a really long time. Physically, like I mentioned, the ZV-1 is similar in size to the RX100, but you'll notice some differences for sure. First of all, they have an improved grip on the front and a thumb rest on the back. However, they've moved the movie record button from inside that thumb rest on the RX100, and now it's a nice big button on top of the camera near the shutter button. This is definitely gonna be welcomed by those who dislike the movie record button position before. I would love to see them add the ability to customize it for other functions now that you can enable movie recording with the shutter button in movie modes. As much as this camera has some things that the RX100 series doesn't have, it's also missing some things that we're used to seeing on Sony's other compact cameras. For example, there is no focus ring on this camera. You can still manual focus if you want to, but you have to do it by going to manual focus mode and using the menu ring on the back. If you like manual focusing a lot, this is not a great experience. Also, they've removed the flash and the electronic viewfinder that we see on the RX100 in favor of a Sony multi-interface hot shoe and an improved three capsule microphone system with a bigger grill and better directionality for the subject in front of the camera. It definitely sounds better than a lot of internal microphones on cameras these days, but I'm very glad that they still gave us a typical 3.5 millimeter jack for an external microphone. One cool thing that they also include is a small windscreen that connects to the hot shoe and covers the microphone and makes your ZV-1 look like it has a cool haircut. This is a test of the onboard microphone. Uh, it's not super windy out here, but there is a little bit of a breeze and uh, I don't currently have the windshield on there. This is a test of the onboard microphone with the windshield installed in the hot shoe. Like I said, it's not super windy out here, but there is a little bit of a breeze, so hopefully it made just a little bit of a difference. And finally, this is a test using an external microphone. I'm currently using the Deity V-Mic D3. What does it sound like? It's also got a windshield on it, so we should be doing pretty good as far as that breeze goes. Beside the microphone input, we also have micro HDMI and micro USB. No, I do not know why they didn't put USB-C on it. I feel like the world is ready for USB-C everything, but Apparently we're just not getting it. Another thing that differentiates this camera physically from the RX100 is that there is no dedicated mode dial and instead there's a mode button on the top and then you can choose your mode by looking at the screen and using the dial on the back. It's not really as efficient as having a dedicated dial but it gets you where you're going. Now if you're going to be using this as a vlogging camera you're going to be happy about this next thing. Included in this camera is Sony's optical steady shot stabilization that helps with those little jitters you get from hand holding the camera. But that's not it. They've also added digital stabilization in video mode that smooths it out even more at an expense of a small crop. When I was introduced to this camera, they mentioned that many of the features were a direct result of focus group meetings that they had at Sony Camera Camp. And I can personally confirm that Chris from the channel, Becky and Chris, specifically requested adding of digital stabilization as a new feature in future cameras. Thank you, Chris. Like I said before, you've got 4K recording up to 30 frames per second in the ZV-1, but you've also got HD recording up to 120 frames per second. And they've also created a special high frame rate mode that records 240, 480, or 960 frames per second, and then slows it down to either 24, 30, or 60 frames per second in camera. And all of those are full 1920 by 1080 HD. The catch there is that they don't record sound and they only record in small bursts, but it's still pretty crazy to get 40 times slow motion in full HD. And of course, like I mentioned before, we finally get to see a side flip screen on a Sony camera. Super handy for filming yourself, which is basically what this camera is all about. Pre-orders for this camera will start immediately at the introductory price and they're also announcing their new vlogger kit bundle that comes with Sony's cool new little Bluetooth remote control slash vlogging handle slash mini tripod, which is 
super awesome, and a 64 gigabyte UHS-2 memory card. Links and info for everything are in the description if you want to check that out. Availability and delivery for pre-orders will be on June 11th, 2020. But as always, I want to know what you guys think about the new ZV-1. Leave a comment down below and on your way down, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification button so you don't miss new reviews, tutorials, and more. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.